Long time, no exposition. So, here we are in lockdown. Again. I always imagined that martial law would mean interesting things were happening, like mass civil unrest or insurrection or something like that. Alas, no such luck. Last spring, when these lockdowns first began, there was something of a novelty. And there was a lot of messaging about, you know, being productive with the new downtime. You shouldn't come out of lockdown unless you've learned two new skills, improved yourself in various other ways. I noticed all those people seem to have shut up when the suicide numbers started coming in. But I think it's surprising for a lot of people how much how much of their life was outside of themselves, away from their homes. I mean, things haven't changed much for me. I still work every day. I still have all the same obligations. Obligations to my customers, to my creditors, to my craft. All my extracurriculars were taken away, though. It's not like there were a lot. But I can't train longsword anymore. I miss going to restaurants, going to bookstores. The gun club's closed, but it's not like that really matters because they already made my guns illegal. But I know other people who are really struggling to find something to do with themselves. <clears throat> We've all become so pampered, so soft. I mean, obviously it's worse in the cities, but it's bad everywhere. And at least urbanized don't delude themselves that they're self-sufficient by default. I mean, it takes more than a wood stove and a deer rifle to comfortably ride out the apocalypse. You see a lot about people baking. I guess it makes sense. The only skill most of us have left is eating. But how do we get to this point where so many of us can't even think of anything to do with ourselves? I mean, yeah, it's hard when... The skills you do have are illegal when you're confined 24-7 to a place you normally only sleep in. But even so, why is it so hard to think of something to do with yourself on your own initiative? Probably just lack of practice. We hardly make anything that we use. I mean, this whole mess has really driven that point home. Everything's manufactured for us. Our toys, our tools... Our homes, manufactured tools, manufactured environments, manufactured problems. And I guess that's what I'm really thinking about. I had a friend who spent the first house arrest period playing a lot of video games. Played Skyrim. I, I played the game a little bit. It's kind of neat. I, I think I see the attraction. I mean, it's very pretty. But what I don't get is the sheer depth of the game. I understand escapism, but it's way beyond escapism. It's an entire substitute life. You, just, you can't just plug it in and unwind for 20 minutes and then go on about your day. It, it takes hours just to start. It takes hundreds of hours to play through the whole thing. There's weeks and weeks and months of working time. The people who build them and who like them say, oh, it's a sandbox. You can do anything. You can build things. You can buy a house. I know you can walk around in these games and take a novel down off a shelf and you can sit there and read the novel. Sometimes there's series of novels that have been written just for the game. The levels of creative energy that go into building these games is just staggering. So the people who build the games have this remarkable, beautiful achievement. But what is it for everyone else? It's just a black hole. There's nothing you can gain from it. All your choices are scripted. All your options are preordained. Even the crafting bits where you're making things. You're just acting out a sequence that someone else has come up with. There's not a drop of real creativity anywhere in it. You're not even pretending. You're just hitting 
buttons like a chimp in a rocket. And so you sink 200 hours into this, maybe. Learning to manipulate this digital world for dopamine hits. And what have you got when your mastery is complete? All that time on the couch, getting soft, squinting your eyes. Not a single bit of it transfers off the screen. Not a single useful skill, not a single piece of real knowledge. Nothing you can ever actually show another person. I mean, it It even fails as a narrative device. A paragraph of story takes five hours to play out. Escapism? Uh, how many excellent fantasy novels could you read in that amount of time? You could go through everything Robert E. Howard ever created. You could if video games and social media hadn't destroyed your attention span by spamming you for dopamine hits. What am I even irritated about? About the waste of time. Time is precious. There's only so much of it, and you'll never have more than you have right now. Once you reach adulthood, you realize the real world has more romance and intrigue and depth of possibility than anything imagined by a single person. I guess it's, in a sense, when you let go of your fantasies, you gain the ability to actually realize them. We're human beings. We have divine creative power. We can build whatever we want if we just put in the hours. You can pull elements out of that fantasy and put them into the world around you. you but you can't put in those hours if you spend them on the couch with a stupid video game. The same way it doesn't do any good just to sit and daydream. Well, that's probably better for you than staring at the screen. I mean, don't play Guitar Hero. Learn to play the guitar. If you like swords, learn to fight with swords. You could study parkour. You can actually climb buildings. Learn to track animals. Learn herbal medicine. I mean, if you're watching this video, you have at your fingertips almost unlimited knowledge for free. Or at least you do for the time being, until they memory hole everything, and all the more reason you need to get after it. Children. Little children are always looking for an identity they can just walk into and inhabit. I mean, you're a shy kid, you're transferring to a new school, so you you pretend you have an accent. You want to be special. Look back at the ridiculous costumes you wore when you were a teenager. A leather trench coat? Seriously. But look at your life. Figure out who you are. And then you can figure out what kind of cool person you want to be. And outside of a screen, you can actually do things that matter. Now, admittedly, that's a little harder when you're under house arrest, but you still have two hands and an imagination. You can use this time and figure out how to use them. You can use them independently and do incredibly, th incredible things. You can learn to use them together, and together you can do actual magic. And that's one of the reasons I do what I do. I can take cold iron, a bar of black steel, and with just heat and patience and controlled force, I can shape it into anything I can think of. Something that didn't exist outside of my head until I pulled it into reality. And it's permanent. It's real. One day I'll be gone. We'll all be gone, but 
the things I made, the things that you make, they'll still be here, still being used, hopefully still appreciated by the people around them. There's nothing more real than the things we make with our own hands. My friend playing Skyrim. She hit like level 68 and her Xbox glitched. Gone. Everything wiped. All that time spent on the couch. Nothing to show for it. But then again, what would she have had to show for it anyway? <laughs>